The Atonement family, Pastor Ertl here uh, for our daily devotion from Romans chapter 8. I have a question for you to consider to start things off today. What would happen inevitably if you decided to let a child or children go wherever they wanted to go and do whatever they wanted to do and get into whatever they wanted to get into? Chances are they'd eventually get themselves into a lot of trouble. Chances are they'd eventually get themselves into a position where they're able to or, or would hurt themselves or perhaps even worse. And so with our kids especially, we, we put boundaries on them. We, we, put, uh, we put walls up for them um, to, to keep them from going wherever they want, but it's for their own good, right, ultimately. For example, at, at my house, we have, uh, we have a gate um, by the stairway to keep our one-year-old from um, going up and down the stairs until she, uh, until she gets good at, at doing those stairs. Why? Because we don't want her to fall down the stairs and hurt herself. Listen to what God, through the Apostle Paul, tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Yeah, creation was subjected to frustration, and that word in the original language really means emptiness, uselessness, futility. The Jerusalem Bible uh, puts it this way, it's unable to attain its purpose. And this happened not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. And who is that? Well, that's God. This is God's doing. God subjected his creation to frustration. Subjected his creation to this state of being unable to attain its original purpose. Why? Well, think back to the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve fell into sin... What did God do? He eventually kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, and he set that angel guard with the flaming sword flashing back and forth, right? Why did God do that? Because he didn't want them to eat from the tree of life and then live forever in their sin-corrupted state. Why didn't God want that? Because he had something better in mind for them. And that something better he had already mentioned to them because he had promised already there in the Garden of Eden before he kicked them out to send a savior, to free them from sin, to free them from everything that had entered the world on account of the fall into sin. It's the same thing with why God has subjected his creation to frustration. Would you want to live forever in a world where we see so many terrible things happening, not only out there, but also in our own lives, and a lot of those things being the, the result of, of, of choices and actions that we've made and we've taken? No, God has something better in mind for us. He wants to liberate all of his creation from that frustration and bring it into glory. That is why, as we heard yesterday, the creation um, eagerly expects, along with us, has this eager expectation for the end, where God will finally liberate us all and everything into this state of eternal glory where sin and sickness and sorrow and sadness are no more. That eternal state of glory being simply thanks to the life and death and resurrection of our Savior Jesus. And so... Yes, it may be frustrating, like a little child who's, who's unable to go where they want. But God has subjected all of his creation to frustration. Why? Because he has something better in mind for us. Because he has something better in mind for all creation. Eternal glory with him forever. Today we're going to pray uh, for those who are currently unemployed. And so please bow your head, your head and pray with me. Heavenly Father, you've told us not to be afraid of having enough or to worry about tomorrow because you daily clothe the lilies of the field with flowers and, and you daily feed the creatures, the birds of the air. And you make the point that aren't we much more valuable than they are. And so with that confidence, Lord, we ask you to mercifully provide for the earthly needs, especially 
of those who are unemployed or who are uncertain of, of where, um, where their needs are going to be met tomorrow. Give them certainty in your gracious promises. According to your good and gracious will, Lord, we ask you to bring these times of financial hardship and unemployment for so many to a swift end that we all may rejoice once again in the abundant blessings that you provide. Forgive us for our many worries and fears for the sake of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, and strengthen us to daily trust in you. Amen. Once again, a reminder to, uh, to tune in on Sunday for our Palm Sunday worship at uh, at uh, eight fifteen rather, uh, and then Bible class will be posting at nine thirty. God's blessings to you.